Hey guys, I'm Josh, and this week I'm just joshing around, making some jewelry out of wood. I've always wanted to try my hand at making a piece of jewelry. So for Christmas this year, I decided to make a locket for my wife. For the locket, I'm using a 1x6 piece of oak. And I'm cutting it down to size using my chop saw and my bandsaw. The bandsaw needed a slight bit of adjustment because the blade was starting to drift. After cutting down the blank to the rough size that I was wanting, I used some super glue to glue both pieces back together so that I could get a consistent cut when I shaped it into the circle. After allowing the super glue to set, I went ahead and traced out the size that I thought would have been adequate at the time before cutting it down closer to its final shape using my scroll saw. As I've said before in these videos, it's always a good idea to leave a little extra material onto the piece so that you can sand it off into a better shape. And here I'm just using a small flat screwdriver to separate the two pieces before further sanding it down. My plan for the locket was to have a small hinge which would attach both sides together, while also setting a small magnet in each side to hold it securely closed. For the picture area, I'm using my router with a small bit to route out all of the material. Before using some sandpaper and some chisels to clean it up a little bit. Since I have never made a piece of jewelry in my life, this was all a huge learning experience for me. I'm using both my utility knife and a chisel to remove material so I can inlay the hinge. I'm hoping that this will allow the locket to close nice and flush. I also mixed up some five minute epoxy in order to set the hinge into place, figuring this would help. Things were going relatively well up to this point, or so I thought. It was about a week and a half between my miserable failure, which I hadn't filmed, and this point right here. I got extremely frustrated and actually considered scrapping the entire project. However, the passage of time brings clarity, and it allows you to reconsider your methods. So after making the repairs to the original side of the locket, I decided that a more systematic approach would be more appropriate for the second half of the locket. And I ended up getting much better results. To find the correct placement for the other magnet, I put it into place and tapped it with a dead blow hammer to mark it onto the wood, before using a smaller drill bit to drill the pilot hole, then switching to the bigger drill bit. I had to ream the hole out a little bit just because these magnets are metric sized and my drill bits are not. Now that both magnets are set into place, the locket can stay closed more securely and allow me to find the final shape a little bit better. Now here is where everyone's tastes will differ. My wife has always liked Celtic imagery and symbols. So I decided to do a nice Celtic Trinity love knot. I started out by using a wood chisel, but switched over to the Dremel tool before switching back to the wood chisels. I just, I really have good luck with these things. One thing that I found is that oak is a lot harder to carve than both basswood and pine. However, it is not impossible to carve it. It just takes a little bit more time and effort. My idea for the finish was to make it look just a little bit old and weathered. So naturally to do that, I'm going to use some shoe polish. 
before scuffing it up with some sandpaper. And then applying a couple coats of Danish oil. Although I was very happy with how this locket was turning out, for some reason it suddenly hit me that this thing is huge. So I decided I'm going to make another one that's smaller. Now, part of the reason that I made the first one so big is because I've never done this before, as I've already said, and I wanted to have a little bit more room to work on something. But after completing the other one, I gained some comfort in working on it. So I'm pretty much going to just replicate all the steps that I used with the first one. With one small change, I am actually not going to install a hinge on this locket. I decided instead on an alternate design. For this one, the hinging action is going to be done using the string or chain, though I am still going to use the magnets. One thing that I found in making this smaller locket is that having smaller magnets would be a lot nicer. I am once again using some 5-minute epoxy to set the magnets into place. Their fit is not quite as tight as it was in the other locket, and this wood is a little bit softer, so I didn't want to risk them slipping out. Right here you can especially see why it would be nicer to have the smaller magnets so it didn't cut down on the picture size for this smaller locket. I'm carving a matching Celtic symbol into this locket just like I did for the bigger one. After the carving is complete, I will go ahead and give it the same finish that I did to the larger locket. I am very happy with how both of these pieces turned out. While there are definitely things that I would change the next time that I do this. But this was a fantastic learning experience for me. And when I gave both of these pieces to my wife for Christmas, she absolutely loved them. Which is great because sometimes it's really hard to find the right gifts for her. But now I'm excited about all these upcoming holidays and anniversaries and everything because Maybe I'll be able to surprise her again and make something that she'll love. Well, that does it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, because I sure did enjoy making these lockets. I hope you all had a great holiday. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.